Let me just get your reaction to this news. Uh, Sabrina, they're saying this is unprecedented in terms of the size of these cuts uh, for a company uh, of this size. What's your take on what's happened here? Um, it's not surprising to executive search professionals. And anything really in fixed income or commodities or currencies is being hit. So what's happened in the investment bank in Credit Suisse is going to be happening everywhere. But, you know, they clearly had a history that they had to take care of. And so they're reacting pretty aggressively right now. And don't forget their senior person is an ex-McKinsey person. Mm -hmm. And that tends to be very management consulting, reactive versus waiting. So I think you're going to see them to try to make changes to make things better pretty quickly. But, you know, a lot of people who have left or been cut from financial services uh, have thought of wealth management investment firms as a haven. Right. Does this sort of turn that logic on its head or is BlackRock a one-off? BlackRock is not necessarily a one-off, but wealth management isn't really extremely concerned right now. We still see it jammed with hiring and with people moving around. Everybody has some kind of wealth. So every firm has tried to get into wealth management, whether it be, you know, not a lot of money, but you're considered wealth management to, you know, obviously billions of dollars. But it is a money maker still for all of the firms. The, really what we're looking at here is when it when you really look at the volatility of the market, which she was saying as well, that's really what's hitting everybody. And the question is, how are they handling it? And people are still investing their money and still have to make changes because they don't want to just make it all cash. So that's where wealth management keeps going because people are saying, I want to do something with my money. What should I do? And they keep moving it or keep it and take advice. I want to ask you about the ramifications of that. There's a function on the Bloomberg loss go kind of indicate we've, we've looked at sort of all of the cuts we've seen here, all the big cuts we've seen in the financial services industry recently. And we are talking in the tens of thousands. And I imagine that leads to a lot of people banging on your door, uh, trying to find work, trying to find where to go to next. What do you tell them? And, and, and how willing are people to make a change in terms of the kind of work they're doing? And just if you look at the screen, I mean, 30,000 job cuts in Barclays, Barclays over the past there. year. Right. I mean, this is people. I tell people, and it's a hard thing to tell people, you do have to reinvent yourself. And reinvent yourself either means what are the best qualities I have? How can I put it into another area, product? You know, do I move into sales? Do I move into something that I'm good at, but it's not something that I particularly did? Do you go back to school for technology? You know, technology is something that is everywhere. I mean, I know we talk about how many cuts we're having and how bad it is in investment banking, but also let's look at the other side of it. FinTech is hiring. Look at cyber. Look at what happened in the law firms. That's all related very much in the financial services world. What proportion of the people who are getting laid off do you think are actually going to find employment? I think they're not going to find the same employment, most likely, most of them. Um, or if they do find similar employment, it's going to be at a totally different kind of firm. It's not going to be at a big firm. It's maybe going to be at a smaller firm where they're very talented, but, uh, you know, they're not looking to be in a big company any longer. So I think a huge amount of them will get hired. The question is, what skills do they have that are hireable in a different kind of setting? Uh a lot of your job now must be delivering some tough medicine to people who yeah. think that it is the way that it was and, and things are different. Well, I think, honestly, nobody ever thinks it's the way that it was anymore since 2008, 2009. So, you know, the world of bonuses, the world of people making extraordinary money, there's always going to be people making extraordinary money, but it's less of them. And most people understand that a bonus is no longer expected. It's someone you, you actually have to earn and you're company has to Imagine do well. That. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, you know what I'm struck with? You know, a lot of these banks are cutting tens of thousands of jobs all at once. Mm -hmm. How do they do this? I mean, without cutting entire slices of their business. They, they think about the cost, period. And the most expensive cost every place has is people. That is the only way you can stop the bleeding is really by getting rid of your people. Now, we hope, you know, don't forget back in 2008, 2009, they got rid of a lot of people back then. They did learn a lesson that it cost unbelievable amounts of money to hire and fire, hire and fire. So what we're hoping is even though you're seeing so many of these cuts, it's not going to be a lot more because then, you know, let's not forget in three, four, five years, a lot of these areas come back and they have to rehire these people again. Or a lot of these people leave, start their own firms, which we saw last time. That's why there's so many smaller firms competing with the large firms and competing really competing. So a lot of what's going to happen is you're going to see some people leave, open up their own firms, three or four years, 
they're in really good standing and they're doing really well. So that there's going to be a period of time that people are not going to get employed, but there's going to be another period of time that you're going to see things starting, entrepreneurs coming up and people getting hired again. How real is that link between Wall Street and Silicon Valley now? We saw Ruth Porat going out there. Uh, clearly, there's some interest in corners of Silicon Valley to pulling from Wall Street. It's one of my Happening a lot? And, is, and it, how difficult is that transition to make? It, it's amazing how much it's become the norm. You know, years ago, nobody from Silicon Valley would even consider coming to financial services or New York or, you know, anything that was out of being the creative, cool guy or woman out there. Now it's totally different. I myself, it's one of my specialties. And what happened is when you talk about cybersecurity, when you talk about the best technology, every product in technology, in financial services is technology, right? So if you have people that only know financial services but don't know technology, we're not going to have the best products, right? But if you pick the guys from Google and from the top firms out in Silicon Valley and you bring them with their incredible minds, they can learn what product needs to be made. So we're really seeing a huge difference in the shift of financial services going after technology and people coming out of school saying, do I want technology? Where do I want it? Where do I want my future to be? We don't see them home growing financial services technology yet in financial services, but we see it being taken from technology and really turning into fintech.